Did you know you can watch a life-giving kids service each week? Go to lifechurchgreenbay.com slash kids where your kids can learn about Jesus in a fun, uplifting way. New episodes release every Friday for you to watch and discuss. Make kids service a part of your kids' watching lineup. As we journey through life, we all have opportunities to be generous. Because you are generous with your time, talent, and resources, together we can be generous by creating engaging in-person experiences, live online services, and fresh virtual resources so that thousands of people on the 920 and beyond can experience the life-changing message of Jesus every single week. Your tithe and above and beyond giving of any amount make it possible to create above and beyond experiences that point to the generosity of God. Online giving is safe, simple, and secure. Reoccurring giving makes it even easier. Together, let's be generous. Life's a journey. There's so much going on. It can be overwhelming, discouraging. The same struggles, the same frustrations. It's like a cycle you can't get out of. We're all under pressure, and sometimes it feels easier to keep pushing through instead of stopping to look at where you've come from and what's keeping you from moving forward. It's time to slow down, shift your priorities, change perspective, reset your expectations. What has happened in your life that has caused you to act how you act, talk how you talk, be who you've been? It's time to get to the root of your frustrations, face those difficulties, and overcome the challenges that have been holding you back. Journey to Wholeness can help. It's time to get the answers you're looking for so you can start seeing the results you want in your relationship with God and with people. Hello, Life Church family. We're in the building in De Pere if you're local. So if you didn't hear that already, you can join us any Sunday at 1045 in the building in De Pere. But many of you are in pockets right now. Many of you are online with us right now from all over the nation and really all over the world. Thanks for being a part of our family. A couple cool announcements if you are local. We are going to have a teen Sunday. Sixth through 12th grade students will on Sunday, next Sunday, the 31st, have a time where we can highlight some of them. Some of our worship team members from the youth ministry will be on stage helping with worship. As well as afterwards, there's going to be discussion in the arcade and then they're gonna have the basketball court open they're gonna have all of the gaming areas open and they're gonna meet with leaders after next week's service they're gonna also provide pizza so that's super cool and then next month the end of February in the on the last Wednesday of February there's going to be a citywide youth night with worship a message and squads so start to spread the word and we hope to see you and your team if you're local next Sunday we love you guys enjoy Enjoy the rest of the service. Hey friends, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you're not in a place where you have access to a traditional Bible, you can open up the U version, or it's also called the Bible app and all the notes and scriptures, those have already been uploaded. Of course, we'll also put the scriptures right there on your screen. Wherever it is that you're watching us from, I love you so much and I'm so grateful that you are a part of our family. You know, I've really enjoyed this series. I've enjoyed this idea that some principles are only learned through a lifetime. This idea that some things, they don't come easy and they don't come fast. Some things take time. They require testing. They come through strains and struggles, lumps and losses. 
I've also really loved hearing from some of my friends during this series, like Pastor Becky, who's not only our comptroller, but who also leads Journey to Wholeness, our counseling and restoration program, which if you haven't gone through Journey to Wholeness yet, guys, do it. Everyone has wounds. Everyone needs Journey to Wholeness. I loved hearing Pastor Becky talk about faith. I wanna keep this conversation going today with a message that we're calling generosity versus greed. Let's pray. God, we love you. Thank you so much. I mean, for everything, all the things that you've done and all the things that you're gonna continue to do. Your love, it endures forever and your generosity, it, it's overwhelming. It never stops and I can't wrap my mind around that. And so today, I pray that your overabundant heart of generosity would beat within us, that our hearts and our minds would be changed. Help us to be generous, in Jesus' name, amen. Generosity, now listen, I've been really anxious to talk about this one because if you know me at all, you know I'm a really generous person. I love giving, love blessing people. It's it's something I actually wanna be known for. I want, when my name is mentioned in conversation, for someone in that conversation to say, oh man, he's a really generous guy. Or, or for someone to be able to speak at my funeral and say, Sean was the most generous guy I ever met. And it's a tendency that I've been actively trying to advance in my life, to expand in my life. I've actually been praying. I've been writing in my prayer journal this whole past year that God will continue to grow Pastor Sonny and my business ventures outside the church so I can be the largest financial contributor to the church. Because generosity just pumps from my heart through my veins. It's one of the core characteristics of my life because it's something I've spent a lot of time thinking about. I've spent a lot of time praying about. I've spent a lot of time working on it. But lately, if I can be completely honest, transparent, if I could just be vulnerable for a minute, for the first time since I came to Jesus, I've actually been struggling with it. Like, over the past couple months, I've felt like it's been slipping. My desire to be generous has been dissipating. And honestly, it's because I've been carrying offense. I started feeling like some of the people in my life, I felt like they started taking me for granted, like they had become unappreciative, they had become entitled. I just wanted them to be more thankful. But then one day, on a day I wasn't even praying about it or complaining to God about it, he said, why? And then he just sat there. And I was like, um, hello? Why what? <laughs> and he was like, why do you need people to be more thankful? As a matter of fact, why do you think they need to be thankful at all? I mean, are you generous or are you really just insecure? When you give, are you being generous or are you trying to pay for their affirmation? Are you trying to buy people's acceptance? Are you trying to buy a claim? Are you blessing people? Or are you just trying to look good? Because if you're just wanting to look good, if you're just trying to build the reputation of or the image of someone who's generous, well, that's not, that's not actually generosity. That's greed. Y'all, I was like, bruh. It was like getting slugged in the stomach. It took the breath out of my body. I'm not greedy. I'm not greedy. I'm not greedy. Am I? I can't be greedy. Literally, you can't be greedy and go to heaven. I mean, it's one of the seven deadly sins. In fact, it's number two on the list. It goes pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and slothfulness. Greed, it's defined as an artificial, rapacious, that means aggressive, an artificial, rapacious desire for and pursuit of material things. Thomas Aquinas, he wrote, greed is a sin against God inasmuch as man condemns eternal things for the sake of temporal things. Henry Edwards, he said, greed plunges a man deep into the mire of this world 
so that he makes it to be his God. Luther said, like pride, greed can lead to not just some, but all evil. I mean, I don't believe in purgatory, but in his book, The Divine Comedy, Dante wrote, penitents of greed, they are bound and they are laid face down on the ground for having concentrated excessively on earthly thoughts. More importantly, the Bible has plenty to say about greed. Proverbs 1 says, this is what happens to everyone who's greedy for unjust gain. Greed takes away his life. Proverbs 15 tells us greed brings grief to the whole family. Proverbs 28 says greedy people try to get rich quick, but don't realize they're headed for poverty. And the greedy, they stir up conflict. But those who trust in the Lord, those are the people who are going to prosper. Jesus said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life isn't measured by how much you own. Among a list of other things, the apostle, St. Paul, he said, greedy people will not inherit the kingdom of God. In fact, in another one of his letters, he said, you can be sure, you can be confident that greedy people won't inherit the kingdom of God because greedy people are idolaters worshiping the things of this world. So clearly I can't be greedy. Like, I can't be greedy. And neither can you. It's a death sentence. So with that in mind, with all that as the backdrop, can I give you the cure to greed? It's so simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. The cure to greed is generosity. Easy to say, sometimes difficult to do. So let me leave you with something practical. Let me leave you with four ways to cure greed. Here's the first. Be generous with your resources. Now, a lot of people, especially Christians, have been taught that money is the root of all evil. Eh, wrong, nope. I know plenty of people with loads of money who aren't evil. And on the flip side, I know plenty of people who have no money who are plenty evil. Not only is this idea of money being the root of all evil not true, it's not even biblical. The scripture used to manufacture this idea actually says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So the cure to that's real simple. Don't fall in love with your money. Use this formula. Get it, give it. Get it, give it. Get it, give it. <laughs> because in God's economy, he's looking for conduits, people he can give through, and he'll give to people he can give through. The Gospel of Luke, it says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I was thinking the other day, what if that means it'll be multiplied after you give it away? What if when you give your stuff away, what if when you give your money away, the people or the places that you give it to, they're able to blossom with those things. They're able to boom with those things. So why not just be generous with your resources? Here's the second way to cure greed. Be generous with your time. The most precious commodity on earth is time. It's irreplaceable. Once it's gone, you can never get it back. But what if you viewed the commodity of time like a currency? And if you viewed it as a currency, you then have a choice in what you do with that. You can spend it or you can invest it. You know, as my kids get older, as, as they get closer to leaving my house and being released out into the wild, I'm doubling down on the investment of my time. I don't have time to spend on selfish things. I need to be investing my time into them. And the return on that investment is they'll wanna actually be around me when they get older when they get married, when they have kids, during the holidays. I mean, think about it. How many of you lived under stress over the holidays because you had to be around your family or theirs? Well, I'm investing now so that later my kids won't feel like they have to be around Pastor Sonny and I. They'll feel like they get to be around us. So I wonder, 
Who do you have in your life that you need to be investing your time into? Who needs you to be generous with your time? The book of Hebrews says, let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some of us are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. Don't isolate yourself. Give somebody your time. Ecclesiastes says, two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone, well, that person's in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord isn't easily broken. So invest your time in somebody. Be generous with your time. Here's a third way to cure greed. Be generous with your words. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. <laughs> Give away compliments. Give away confirmations. Give away congratulations. When people do something, make a really big deal about it. Find something positive and shout it out in their life. The book of Philippians, it says, if anything is excellent, if anything is worthy of praise, focus on those things. The Proverbs, they say gentle words are a tree of life. They say the power of life and death reside inside of your tongue. The book of Ephesians says, don't use harmful words, only helpful ones. You know, the kind that build up and provide what's needed so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. Do you know how much of a difference you can make in someone's life just today if you would just be generous with your words? Here's a fourth way to cure greed. Be generous with your love. Why are you rationing your love? Give it away. Give your love like it'll never run out. You know, love is like a boomerang. The more intensity with which you throw it out there, the faster it'll come back to you. So love and love everybody. The Gospel of Luke says, do unto others as you'd like them to do unto you. If you only love those who love you, why should you even get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. The great Mr. Rogers, he said, everyone longs to be loved. And the greatest thing we can do is to let people know that they're loved and that they're capable of loving. Some people don't even know how to love. So how do we teach them? We love them first. It's the biblical model, St. John the Apostle. He said, we love because God loved us first. And guys, he loved us without hesitation, reservation, or equivocation. His love, it's immeasurable, it's intentional, and it's intense. Mother Teresa, she said, intense love, it doesn't measure, it just gives. That echoed the words of 1 Corinthians, which says, even if I give away everything that I have and sacrifice myself, if I don't have love, I've gained nothing. That scripture is saying, be generous with your love. Can you do that today? Because if you will, it'll cure the greed that's trying to creep in and crowd out the heart of God. Would you close your eyes? Salvation is the ultimate act of generosity. I've said this dozens of times in my life in ministry, that salvation is the ultimate act of generosity. That God took the most important thing to him, the most valuable thing to him, and he sent him to earth so that he could die for you. And so today, wherever it is that you're watching this, if you're outside of a relationship with God. I'm not talking about you know who he is. I'm talking about you've committed your life, your thoughts, your intentions, your actions, your love to him. We're gonna give you the opportunity to switch and to change to that. In the church world, we call it salvation, where you give yourself to him and you receive him in return. And it's really easy to do that. The Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth that you're a sinner and that you'll believe that Jesus can change that, you'll be saved. So I wanna give you the opportunity to do that, and here's how. 
I'm going to say a few lines in a prayer, and then I'm going to pause. And if you'll repeat those words and mean them in your heart, the Bible says you'll be saved. So if you need a relationship with the Lord, would you say this after me? Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, but I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Would you come into my life? Would you change me? Would you make me different? Would you make me new? Would you be my Lord? And would you be my Savior? In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, he just generously gave you hope and eternal life. And we want the opportunity to help you develop this relationship with the Lord. And so if you would just message us and let us know that you made this decision, we'll be sure to reach out to you and connect with you and help you on in this journey. But we're not done. Maybe you're a Jesus guy or you're a Jesus girl and you say, I'm going to heaven, but you're like me. You've been struggling with your generosity. And you say, Sean, I need to, I need to kick this back in gear. We're a few weeks into the new year and I really need to flip the switch on this. If that's you and you've been struggling with your generosity, whether that be with your money or with your time or with your love or with your words, I wanna pray for you. And so God, for my friends, help them. Help them live their lives generously with everything we've got. We love you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
This moment doesn't have to end now. The things you are thinking about, you're questioning, you're mauling over right now, have a conversation with someone. Call someone up and talk about this. Or if you're with someone right now, you could go to lifechurchgreenbay.com or text discussion to 97000. There you can download discussion questions to prompt even more. And if you'd rather listen, try out the Chew On That podcast, where Pastor Scott and a guest talk every week about this very message. You'll find these discussion questions you download will help you with whether you're new to Jesus or you've known Jesus for decades. Either way, they will help you on your Jesus journey.